All right, everyone, as the Kamala Harris astroturfing propaganda campaign continues on Twitter and elsewhere, it's important to weigh in and actually tell the truth. If you look at Trump's post on Truth Social, of course, he probably dictated it to someone else, um, some people are reading that as a refusal to debate Kamala Harris. He's afraid. Chicken Trump, uh, uh, Sisson, I believe, was uh, calling him. Uh, that's actually not the case. What Trump is doing and his team is doing is saying that they're not going to pledge to a debate against somebody who is not yet the actual nominee. Which makes total fucking sense. Now, some people have countered me on this, a couple of people, including some clankers, saying, well, you know, he debated Joe Biden, and Joe Biden wasn't yet nominee. That is true. But he was the incumbent. Nobody was challenging him. It was self-evident that unless something like the debate happened, he would be the nominee. And while they're trying to coronate Kamala, it is not self-evident that a non-incumbent becomes nominee. You could see further party mutiny. Donald Trump is going to sit and wait until the actual DNC happens so that he knows, hey, this is actually the person I'll be debating. Why the hell would he agree to a debate that might technically not happen? Now, it's not going to happen. Kamala will be the nominee. It is self-evident that she will be nominee as well, but she's not the incumbent president of the United States. Therefore, the Trump team has no reason at all to agree to debate her. He's already said any place, any time. He will debate Kamala, by the way, in September, assuming that Kamala Harris doesn't throw in a bunch of last-minute bullshit or something like that. I mean, we already only have two presidential debates now anyway. We used to get three. Uh, the second one usually was just on foreign policy and things of that and of a military nature. Uh, you remember that from back in the day? Back when the political system was acting a little bit more normal than it is now? I mean, it was still screwy because it's politics, but uh, you know, slightly more normal. Unfortunately, now we're down to two. And we don't even get like a town hall style anymore, which is really, really regrettable because I think that we should have that as well. Technically, I think we should have four presidential debates, including, and two vice presidential debates. Uh, the vice presidency is important, especially in a gerontocracy. So, you know, you, you, I, I want more debates, actually. They should fill up the schedule more rather than parsing it down. And hell, half the shit's digital now. It's bullshit. Uh, it, it really drains, by the way, political analysts like myself of uh, really great content. I would love to react to a town hall with uh, Trump and Kamala answering people's questions. That would be wonderful. I mean, that would be... The, the, the talk about blood sports, especially when they load, front load the questions against Trump, which they definitely would do. Based on the reaction of Joe Biden dropping out and Kamala becoming heir apparent. Um, the, the, the legacy media has reinvigorated their uh, wagon circling and astroturfing. Uh, go on Twitter right now. Look at your homepage. If you're into politics at all, uh, you probably see 90% blackpilling about Trump can't win, Kamala's going to win, and Kamala the Great, how wonderful she is, all the wonderful things she's done. It's funny, I didn't find much counterbalance despite the fact that I disproportionately follow accounts that would not be associated with liking Kamala Harris. They just, I'm, I'm just not seeing their posts. They're making them, but they ain't on my home feed, now are they? It's very, very interesting what's happening right now. It's propaganda. I guess that uh, Twitter got an infusion of DNC money or something like that. And you know that it's going to be lopsided on a place like fucking YouTube or Instagram, something like that. Although Zuckerberg did come out and say that Trump's uh, assassination reaction was one of the most badass things he's ever seen. Well, there's that. Hey, Zuck, don't you fucking try to grow on me, my man. <laughs> don't you fucking do that. <laughs> don't, please. I, I don't want to want, want to like a Generation 2.5 synth, you know, a, a, a Nick Valentine's evil twin or something like that. Trump isn't refusing to debate Kamala Harris. He's simply saying, I can't agree to a debate with someone who I don't know I'm even going to be debating. What's the point? We'll wait until after the DNC. He's not chickening out, he's waiting and seeing what the fucking Democrats are doing. And he's right, by the way, to do this. They're in complete chaos mode right now. You just had a sitting president stand down, not resign, he's, he's still caretaker even though he's clearly got problems. Um, you don't know what's going to happen, you don't even know who the vice president will be. Uh, the, the running mate, you don't know who uh, Kamala's going to choose. I have a feeling that Obama, 
uh, went to the White House and forced them to let him make the shortlist, by the way. I, he's very strategically minded. Think what you will about his policies, and I didn't like them when he was president. He is intelligent. He's better at strategy than most Democrats are, and the Democrats tend to be better than the Republicans at strategy overall, uh, absent the uh, MAGA movement, of course. They, they do a little bit better than the neocons, who like to lose with grace and dignity, bow solemnly and say, we tried. Well, that's sort of their M.O. We tried to slow down the increase in gun control. <sighs> we did our best. It's time to retire with grace. Trump doesn't like to do that. He just likes to fight, fight, fight. You, you may have seen this on numerous occasions. Now, he'll debate Kamala. In the end, uh, they'll agree to debate terms. It'll probably be on ABC still. Probably be on the same date, probably at the same time. Probably with the same ramifications. It's just that Kamala's not the nominee yet. And unlike with Joe Biden, she do, she's not an incumbent. So, technically speaking there is still the possibility. It's like a moonshot possibility, but it can possibly happen that she's not nominee at all. I mean, the Democrats could cycle through three or four people. F fucking uh, everything is chaos right now. So why would Trump agree to uh, debate someone if he doesn't know who he's uh, supposed to debate? It could be that Kam maybe Kamala stands down. Maybe she has a fucking series of mini strokes and she's like, shit, can't do this. Series of unfortunate events mode, and then, you know, it's Gretchen Whitmer out of nowhere, or Hillary comes back, or something like that, which would be the funniest goddamn debate in all of U.S. history, by the way. Again, absent Theodore Roosevelt v. Taft, of course. Um, those debates, I, I wish that they had had uh, television back then, because I would watch that over and over again. I can just imagine how fucking weird that was. <laughs> You're my former best friend. I just caused you, and you're 250 pounds, by the way, I just caused you to break down in tears on a live debate stage. That oratory thing was basically the national sport back then, by the way. Did you know that? People would go, other than going to church sermons, and half the time the church was used for civic purposes, they went to oratory. Uh, people would debate or, or give speeches or, or read off poetry and books and stuff like that, like on the street corner. People would gather around and, and uh, listen to them. That was, that was before television. That was the main form of entertainment, that and books. Back when people read books. You know, I like to write and edit books myself, although I have a little bit less time for that right now as I try to organize all of the crazy shit going on because the news cycle's crazy, the garden is fucking crazy, uh, everything's chaos right now. I mean, I love it, but at the same time, you know. Uh, one thing I will say, Trump should have worded this differently. Should have come out and said, we will wait to negotiate the debate terms until after the DNC, so everything's formalized, but I look forward to presumptively debating Kamala Harris. He should have said something like that. I look forward to whooping her ass. <laughs> that would have been more bravado-esque. He needs to come out and clarify, by the way, in a post, uh, the, the position with regards to the debate, because I know that he's looking forward to debating her. Um, it's going to be like clubbing a baby seal. It probably won't be as disastrous for Kamala as it was for Biden, um, but it will probably still be pretty lopsided. She's not the best public speaker. She's not the best communicator in the world. And the new format actually gives an advantage to Trump. He may not like it, but forcing him to be linear and concise actually worked for him. I mean, again, if Biden had shown up in prime form, he would have lost the first debate. Uh, although it was, uh, he didn't show up in prime form. He showed up looking like a goddamn ghoul from Fallout. That's about all. Peace out.